So, <laughs> so we're here to talk about um, the Flex Radio uh, PGXL um, amplifier, Power Genius XL. Uh, it's a uh, full legal limit with headroom uh, radio, so it'll give you 15 dB a gain. Uh, it's set up for SO2R, so if you're if you're an SO2R fishing audio and you have one of our radios, it's literally plug and play. The only thing you need to use to connect this up with our radios is what I call power pipe and coax. So basically, provided power, it could be 110 or it could be 220. At 110, it operates at reduced power, about 800 watts max. Um, and pipe is the is uh, network, so you need to have an Ethernet connection uh, to interface with this radio uh, and a uh, and coax. That's it. So if you have other um, non-flex radios, you want to uh, connect like an ICOM 7300 or you know you name it, Yesu, Kenwood, Elkcraft. We support all of the different CAT and CI5 formats, as well as pin to band and BCD. So, so this is um, this will interface with any radio that's out there. We also have a mode that's called RF Sense. You can see it right down here if you want to zoom in on that. Um, well, here it's better, a little closer. So, any radio connected to the B port on this. Um, on this amplifier, uh, if you transmit, it will it has a built-in frequency counter, so it'll find that frequency and switch in the right low-pass filter combination. So let's talk a little bit about filtering because that's one of the standout features of this amplifier. Uh, it had most single, uh, most solid-state amplifiers today. Um, they have really, you know, you know that when you amplify a signal using a solid-state device you end up with a lot of harmonics. It's not a tuned amplifier like you would have with the tube. So you end up with a lot of, you know, odd harmonics that go there. And there's substantial energy that's out there. You're doing 1,500 watts um, of, uh, uh, of, of, at the uh, desired carrier frequency. Uh, you can have up to 400 or so watts of energy that's in the harmonics that are generated during the amplification stage. That's just the way these ampl broadband amplifiers work. Unfortunately, there's there's no easy way to do that except use filtering. So what most um, amplifier manufacturers do is they put a, a set of low-pass filters that get switched in based on the fundamental that you're trying to get to, which is a great way to do it, right? It, does, it suppresses it down below what the FCC requires. Um, so you're not having any spurious um, emissions at the harmonic frequencies. Um, but one of the problems with that is, you well know, at, at RF, a low-pass filter acts as a mirror to high-pass filters. It blocks it, but the energy has something to go someplace, so it ends up going back to the devices that are doing the amplification, which can cause all sorts of mischief, right? You can end up with non-linearities, and more importantly, you have to dissipate the additional heat that's coming from that, um, uh, you know, from that low-pass filter. That's just the nature of the game, right? This, however, uses something that a lot of broadcast amplifiers do: is a diplex, as I said, a diplex filters. So, in addition to a low-pass, you have a high-pass filter that siphons off that. Um, that, high, that, that higher frequency energy, and there's a 400 watt dummy load that sits in here that's uh, fan control. So all of the heat and everything that would normally go back, to, that would create nonlinearities and, uh, and, and heat issues inside of the devices gets dissipated by that 400 watt uh, harmonic load, as we call it. Mm -hmm. Right, so that helps, us, it gives you additional uh, linearity. Uh, and also reduces the heat um, that's required to be uh, dissipated from this thing. And in addition to that, there's a software feature, a firmware feature here that's called MEFA, which is stands for Maximum Efficiency Algorithm. And what that does on on um, a constant uh, envelope signals, so that's FT8, RIDI. CW, uh, anything but really single sideband and AM, uh, uh, it will look for the most efficient 
operating point in the devices and set the voltage bias accordingly. Uh, the advantage of that is because if you're running at a higher efficiency uh, in, uh, in the device, there's less heat produced. Uh, again, and the thing that will kill an amplifier deader than a doornail is heat or high voltage, right? So those are the two things that, that LDMOS devices just don't uh, react very well to. So the heat and the thermal management in here, especially with the harmonic load, the, the built-in fans, which, I mean, this thing, uh, this thing has a great set of fans, and, um, the, and MEFA allows you to operate uh, at, it's rated at 100% ICAS, um, um, key down, which means basically 15, um, you know, 15 minutes transmit, 15 minutes cool down over that kind of period. For FT8 and RIDI, it works just great. Um, since it's a SO2R amplifier, there are two sides to it, A and B, right? And they're independent. You can't use them at the same time to transmit, but you can have a flex radio connected to one side and something else connected to the other. So it, it, you don't have one. If you if you you know have one radio, you can still use it with another radio without uh, problem. It weighs 43 pounds. Um, it um, will have um, it operates from like um, I think it's minus 20 C, uh, minus 20 Fahrenheit up to. 100 and some, so it's a standard uh, thing, and um, it's uh, on show. It's on special here today with $1,200 off uh, the price. Are they shipping uh, right now? They're shipping right now. We got him, and we have inventory. All right, that's super. Well, listen, I do a lot of remote uh, operating, and uh, one thing I like to be able to do is shut down my uh, station when I'm not using it, power it uh -huh. off. Uh -huh. So will this power off remotely? <laughs> no, it doesn't have a separate function to power it down uh, remotely. Okay. Uh, but you can, it, it, you, you can have a, um, a remote AC switch yeah. uh, to power it on, to power it off, and that's what most of our remote um, yeah. okay. customers use. Yeah, yeah uh, I know people that use that, yeah. Okay, and is that, uh, is that little iPad up there? Or is that part of it? Well, this is the software that runs on a PC that allows you to monitor the um, the operation of the amplifier and okay. also configure it to use. Uh, but you can also configure it using the the touch panel on the front screen, uh -huh. so you don't have access to a PC. Oh, okay. But this is a, a separate Windows application that you can see the metering on it. Uh, it's also integrated with our our flex radio software so for example if you look over here this is a front thing I can take this I can take this amp and move it to standby and put it uh, oh, put yeah. it in operate and there's meters here um, I can't see it let's see let's go through them uh, th there's PGXL power there we go so there's power at SWR, current, you can select one of these, so it's fully integrated in with our software. Right. So once you set it up, you don't even need this. Okay. Yes. Super. Oh, that's a clean looking amp. Really looks good. And uh, that that's the whole package right there. Yep. That's it, it, it? It's power supplies in it. Everything's integral. Yeah. And if, you, if we can take this apart, do you, do you know who Steve Floyd is? I've heard of him, yeah. So Steve Floyd is the chief engineer at HARP, which is the largest trans, you know, right. most powerful transmitter in the world up on Alaska. He's still, still operation. He owns one of these things, and we sent it off to him. Uh -huh. uh, and he took it apart. We asked him, okay, what do you think of this? And, and I mean, he came by the the booth just yesterday to tell me again how much he he loves his. Uh, PG, like says, it's built at true commercial quality. Yeah. So you don't you don't find that kind of quality in a solid state amplifier in this industry. Um, so uh, it, it's built like a tank, and it's componentized too. So if there ever is a problem, 
getting it serviced is a pretty straightforward thing. In fact, if I had someone from Paraguay bought one of our amplifiers, ended up having a problem with the filter, we shipped him a filter unit. He, he dropped it into the unit, yeah. and he's operating. And he was very thankful for that. He didn't have to ship the amp back through customs and yeah, that makes and, it, and all that of that. Makes it yeah. real nice. Yeah. Uh, so the your competitors, uh, Icon's got that new one out. Ellicraft brought out one a few years ago. KP, uh, 815, the 1500. Yeah. Their most popular amp is the 500, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, how, how does how does this compare with uh, say one of the uh, SPE amps or well, there are, it's Solid a different state. amp, right? So uh, this is built to be an SO2R amplifier. It's yeah. not the typical one in, three out, or one in, two out kind of um, uh, amplifier. It's uh, it, Ethernet is the, um, you know, it was built to use Ethernet and be integrated with our radios uh, at the same time. So right. all of the integration is literally plug and play uh, between uh, the Flex Radio series, and we spent an awful lot of time making sure it works with other manufacturers' radios. Um, so it's kind of the Swiss Army knife of um, amplifiers. So if you bought this, you could be assured that it would work with just about anything that you have. Yeah. I had it have it running. I have an old Heathkit uh, SB104A yeah. that I use. <laughs> You know, I have to buy an interface device because that thing keys at right. 100 minus 120 volts, right? Uh, but it works fine with that. All right. That's great. Well, uh, there's another amplifier that just came out, the Acom. I think it's 20, 2020, Acom 2020. Right. I haven't, yeah. I haven't yeah. looked at that yet. I don't okay. know. Uh, yeah. And... Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about that. I would love to yeah. talk about it, but I don't yeah. know anything about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, super. I appreciate the uh, presentation. You bet. And yeah. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet uh, you, Dan. In seven HQ. I'm doing the fist uh, bump. Right. I'm good in QRZ. All right. Uh, Dan at FlexRadio.com. If anybody yep. has any uh, questions about it, I would be more than happy to uh, answer them. If they have, if there are people that want a presentation at a club. Or something like that. We would love to do a virtual presentation yeah. uh, to you. We've got a Zoom, couple of people, yeah. including myself, that uh, can do that. So, you know, if there's a group of people that you'd like to um, in, have us introduce our products to, that would be That's a good terrific. way to do that. Uh, yeah, I might do that with our hand club, Dan. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you I bet. appreciate it. Okay. All right. Well, have a great day and thanks. All right. Thanks for recording me. All right. Yeah. I'd love to see the video when you get the uh, when you get it done.